Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Philosopher Cards for Humanity. It plays from 1 to 25 player, takes roughly about a half an hour to an hour, and is for ages 14 and up. And in the game Philosopher, you are going to be flipping over cards, playing as either the devotee or the philosopher, as you attempt to uh, discern from other players' cards. It plays similar to games uh, like judging games, in which you're going to be placing a card down as a topic. Other players will have cards in their hand, selecting them, placing them face down, flipping them over, and then discussing the cards they have chosen and why. There's going to be uh, discussions and philosophic conversations that you're going to be having, and eventually the philosopher will choose one of the devotee's cards cards for the topic at hand, that player will win the card and you will play in a continuous rotation clockwise around the table. Go ahead and discern and discuss the cards that you play based on the topics and give players points for placing the cards that you think best represent you or maybe your beliefs in the game Philosopher. We'll take a look down below, I'll show you what comes in the game and of course there's an expansion to it as well and then we'll come up and I will review the game and you can go ahead and pick it up on Kickstarter if you're interested down below. Welcome to the game Philosopher, and here we have the base game along with the Relationships expansion shuffled into both the Topics set of cards and the Viewpoint set of cards. What you're going to get in the game is of course two sets of cards, the box and the rules. Set them aside, shuffle them both, and then deal out seven viewpoints to each player playing the game. Then choose your first Philosopher to start the game. This player is going to take the top card of the Topics deck and place it face up in front of them, and that player will be the Philosopher for the round. Everybody else will be the Devotees, and they are all going to select a card from their hand, after they look at them, and choose one and place it down based on what they think might represent the player and the topic and how it represents them or themselves. After they do that, then the player who is the philosopher will select one of those cards. That player who placed the card down will score the topic as a point, and you will go around the table continuing to do so. Very simple, very straightforward judging style game. So for instance, the topic is sacred. These three cards have been chosen by the other three players. They are then going to flip them over and reveal them. Or, if you want another variant, take all the cards and shuffle them up and then reveal them for a more anonymous aspect to the game. And this player will then go ahead and select one of those cards based on what they think is best represented by this specific topic. Die, uh, this is a deep river of doubt, climbing that mountain and spiraling downward. Uh, so you have to choose what you think is the best. Maybe sacred would best represent climbing that mountain for you, in which case this player would be the closest to what they think represents this card. They would score the topic. All of these cards for the viewpoints would be discarded, and then each player that played a card would get to draw another card going back to seven cards, and the game would then continue with the next player being the philosopher, flipping over a new topic, emotion, and everybody else playing a card. And that's it. It's very simple, very straightforward style game. What's different about this one compared to other ones, however, is the types of conversations you can have to try and discuss with the person that has the topic, the philosopher, why they should pick your card or how your card represents the topic at hand and based on why you think it represents that card. Uh, there's other variants of play as well, where you can go ahead and select one of these topics at random, take seven, choose Choose one of those cards and you can kind of have conversational topics with it. Uh, in the rule book itself it will display the different types of additional gameplay modes, whether it be the one player rules, two player rules, a big group setting, or a point slash counterpoint optional ruling. Of course, after the game is over, you're going to have all these topics left at hand and you can end the game really whenever you'd like or at a set number of topics when a player gets that many, but discuss why you got these topics and how they represent you or what, they, what you think about them and how they represent the group. And the choices that they made, which makes for an excellent talking piece. This game is all about getting to know people, and there are a ton of different topics and viewpoints. I'll go ahead and read a couple of them now. That is delightful, down to the smallest core. This, uh, not in this country, uh, read the stars, no contradiction, there's more where that came from, beautiful concept, and I don't ask questions. Uh, some of the topics, and they're going to be different based on the expansion. This one here is the Relationships expansion, which is why it comes in red, and the base game for white. Long distance relationships, matter, prayer, dimensions, hell, our soul. Uh, 
uh, sadomasochism. Oh, that's a little bit of a spicy one. Invisible realms, archetypes, religion, astrology, solidarity, communal living, platonic relationships, and the matrix. And so as you see, these topics are all very ideologically based and or their you know, philosophical points of view, in which case the game is going to play like that, continuing clockwise until you'd like the game to end. And whoever has the most points and or topic cards is the winner of the game. Let's go ahead and come up for my review. So the gameplay of Philosopher plays similar to Cards Against Humanity, where you will have the Philosopher and the devotees attempting to vie for the Philosopher's opinion or choice in the matter, flipping over topic cards such as past lives and playing cards like what you manifest for the energy that you give. And of course, the Philosopher will have the choice in the matter. Now you can play this game in an open style conversation, in which players will all just reveal their cards and talk about why they chose them, whether it be about themselves or maybe about the Philosopher in question. And then of course, you could also take them and shuffle them up like the basic style judging games and have the Philosopher choose between the random assorted cards. There's also additional variants in the gameplay if you take a look at the rules, where you can go ahead and have a topic card picked from the deck shuffled, and you'll pick seven viewpoints of the cards and shuffle the deck, contemplate the viewpoint that resonates with you the most and why, and then journal it to review later. Pick another topic and another seven viewpoints and continue. There's also two other different types of, or three other different types of optional rules and or variants to the game, and of course you can play the game exactly how you would like, whenever you would like. Now this is, of course, in a nutshell, a judging style game. It plays like all the rest of them in the same manner of placing out topics, taking cards, Cards, revealing them and then having the judge choose one of them but what's unique to this game here is the types of cards in the game and the way in which you will experience it uh, for instance we prefer to play the game in well, most of us in the group prefer to play, play, play the game in the terms of flipping over the cards revealing them showing them to the other player that is trying to judge the game and then having them choose and we're trying to gauge what we think best represents them or even us regarding the topic at hand additionally there's a bunch of expansions that come with the game which is nice we have the relationships expansion so kind of like mm, sidelines topics about more relationship wise and there's of course other expansion you can get if you kind of want your group to resonate with those better these usually will have philosophical or ideological uh, questions and or topics uh, of course viewpoints and you're kind of trying to narrate them based on the cards at hand uh, when playing this game it's not necessarily in my opinion about winning, although there is a point system if you'd like to have that, but more about discussions and of course at the end of the game being able to discern the topics that you've chosen or won and why you won them and what cards helped you win them. And uh, we played this on our live stream actually not too long ago and had a ton of fun doing so. Now this game I prefer over the more uh, risque or sexually inclined style games. This one's a little bit more family friendly obvious in terms of the cards but also they're more intriguing and more thoughtful when it comes to what cards are going to be displayed and the choices that you'll need to make based on how you personally feel about each of the different topics at hand but in general though for players who don't like judging games this will not be for you this is a party style game this doesn't have necessarily a strategy it has more of a idea of choice and based on your uh, knowledge of the other individuals and it also gives you more knowledge about people around the table that you may May or may not have known. Like for instance, I didn't know, one of my friends was very into astrology and then after she discerned a card from her hand, placed it down and showed how into it she was comparatively to me, not very much into astrology, uh, I got to ask her questions about that even after the game. And so the game kind of carried on conversations afterward, which was actually really interesting and something I didn't expect to see from a game like this. Uh, most of these style games, flip them over, have a laugh, choose a player, they win some points. With this one, it's all about discussion of the topics and it's all in a very broad spectrum spectrum so you can kind of decide and talk about whatever you would like to talk about throughout the game. The game is going to come with beautiful large tarot sized cards here, highly high quality and thick beautiful artwork on the back end side and then of course a basic stylization of the words that you're using for topics and viewpoints and then of course the game is going to come with a box as well. Uh, the expansions come in a smaller size box with tarot sized style cards. One nitpick I suppose is the expansion cards we got didn't exactly fit the original cut of the original version of the game, which I hope they will fix in the future, but it's kind of a minor gripe as it's not something you're going to notice when you're playing the game. And additionally, if you buy expansions, the main box is only going to fit one of them. So if you end up getting two expansions, it probably won't be able to fit all of them inside of the box as it stands currently. So it'd be nice to see a larger size box for all the expansions to be added to if you want to pick up 
all of the expansions, of course. Thoughtful, conversational topics, interesting uh, knowledge of your friends that you will be gaining as you play the game, and it has some humor to it as well, which is nice when you're playing the game, a game like these. It can be a little more funny, of course, if you'd like to, but I just kind of like the idea of it switching up and being more philosophical and of course utilizing um learning information from your friends that you may not have heard of before known about before and then the topics afterwards were so cool to have that was something that i really really liked about this game but if you're interested in a judging style game it's a little less on the sexual side and a little more on the thoughtful side it's something that involves conversations and of course something that that definitely plays um i would say probably want i would want three to more three or more players can play this game i probably wouldn't want to play one two or three players although it does have variants for a lower number of players. It really, really shines as a larger party and or gathering or get together style game. And that's because you get to learn about more people. And that's what this game is all about, learning about other people and what they think about certain things. Philosopher, if you're interested, there's a link down below currently on Kickstarter. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Philosopher Cards for Humanity. If you'd like to pick it up, like I said before, there's a link down below in the description. Also, subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button and bell notification button so you can see more of our videos that we play just like this one and our live streams every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch, except for the next two weeks. We'll be moving from a location to this location to a new location and we'll have a new setup and everything, so I'm excited to show you guys that as soon as we get a chance to do so, but we will have pre-recorded videos popping out in the next week or two as we prepare for our move which i guess we already are preparing for last day or two for moonshell if you want to go ahead and back that moonshellgame.com or unfilteredgames.com you can head over to the kickstarter and check take a look at callie's puzzle style game patreon discord all that good stuff links down below as well all right guys thank you so much and as always i look forward to learning more about you next time by playing the game philosopher that was kind of what i was getting at <laughs>